How's it going everyone? It's Than from Tidal Gardens. Long before I ever got into the hobby, I remember seeing dead skeletons of bird's nest corals for sale in stores and marveling at their appearance. Little did I know that the living creature is far more spectacular. The bird's nest coral from the genus Seriatopora is lumped in with other small polyp stony corals. In some respects, the care requirements are similar to those of more mainstream SPS corals such as Acropora and Montipora, but differ in some important aspects as well. If you want to know a little more about these corals, I've included annotations to my videos on those particular ones. But now let's talk about the care requirements for bird's nests. Typically when people think of SPS, they think high lighting requirements. But in terms of bird's nests, the lighting depends a lot on the type of bird's nest. I came across a study on the genetic differences in these corals. I'll link the article in the description if you want to read more about it. It turns out that Seriatopora from different regions of the reef, although they're the same species, are very different genetically. I've seen here at the greenhouse there are varieties like the yellow bird's nest that can thrive in very dim lighting, while other varieties such as the pink and the birds of paradise that require stronger lighting to develop the most appealing coloration. If you put one of the low light bird's nests into a high light tank, what we've seen is a rapid decline in health and bleaching, even if great care was taken to acclimate it to the new lighting. In this sense, bird's nests are both similar and dissimilar to other SPS that typically need lots of light. Moving on now to flow. Bird's nests like a good amount of flow, and short of blowing the colony off the rocks, I've not seen a setup that provided these corals with too much flow. This leads me to a thought I had about purchasing colonies of bird's nests. It's a better idea to purchase a small frag or a colony and allow it to grow. This makes sense for a few reasons. First, frags are generally less expensive and this coral under the right conditions will grow into a full colony very quickly. Second, large colonies are brittle and extremely difficult to transport without damage occurring. This is true for both local sales and online sales. The bird's nest coral has sharp tips that can easily puncture bags, but are brittle enough that they can break apart from minor bumps against the walls of plastic containers. When we ship them, we typically start with small frags, then secure them the best we can with floats. However, they can still break during shipping. The bright side is that the colony recovers from breaking very quickly, and the little bits that broke off can be re-glued to a new substrate to start colonies of their own. The problem that we run into is that the largest plastic containers we ship with is 4 ounces, so if anybody has a good source of watertight containers that are larger than 4 ounces, I'd love to hear about them. Lastly, assuming for a moment a large colony shows up in one piece, the major problem is the shape of the colony itself. Bird's nests, like I mentioned, they grow very quickly, but they grow to a particular shape to maximize flow that was received in its previous home. The flow patterns in the new aquarium may not be well suited for its given shape. This manifests in the coral decaying from the inside where it was not receiving enough water motion. Propagating bird's nests is a very straightforward process. We start with bone cutters and cut them into one inch pieces. From there, we use our trusty dollar store super glue and mount them onto plugs. Bird's nests are quick to recover from the cutting process and usually start growing on their new substrate very quickly. Just as a side note, some people like to glue the frags vertically, while others horizontally. Both methods work, though I tend to glue them horizontally because they tend to stick better and not fall over from being too top heavy. That pretty much does it for Seriatopora. I hope you found this video helpful. If you like this type of stuff, follow us on the web. We're getting more active now in various social networks, so give us a shout. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy reefing everyone.